I first came to the discipline of history at my grandmother's kitchen table. The best stories were always told in her room, but as a kid I could eavesdrop on the ones suitable for the kitchen. Like about that time she fought the Indian agent, the time her good friend went off to war, the time she toured dead lakes and protested uranium mining on our territory. Then I went to school and learned that natives were a thing of the past. In the French language, I learned about two founding nations. I learned that we had no right to self-governance because the French king had sovereignty over North America while we didn't have legal systems or a monarchy. Somewhere along the way, I learned to connect Canada's stories with the ones I learned from Inokamas. Today, I hold a PhD in Canadian history, just like my sister professors in the Jikige Historical Society. Sometimes we get invited to talk about things like Confederation, or this year, Canada's big birthday. It's been a long year of speeches and commemorations. So instead of talking, we decide to resettle at the table. We call on other sisters for help because that's what Native women have always done. It's about what we've always seen, what has been invisible for 150 years. Our time has come, and we wait for conference participants. Ready to feast across time and difference. To sit with reconciliation. To set our own table. We have asked Gowanago to do the Oan Digili Wadekwa, the Thanksgiving Address, the words that come before all else. And so, after a long wait, we too begin to feast. Dr. Luby asked the conference participants to look at the underside of their Confederation placemats, the BNA Act, and Section 91, where Indians appear in a list of federally controlled things, like the Postal Service, beacons, boys, currency, and copyright. Dr. McLeod, a performance scholar, acknowledges the discomfort and uncertainty in entering our unsettling space. We are glad to hear that our performance has invited a productive tentativeness. And entering into spaces of knowing and unknowing, modeling when to act, when to listen, and when to ask questions. We are glad that some of the grannies feel inspired to speak their truths. Watching people coming in and the experience, the tentativeness, the looking for a place, as she's talking, it occurred to me, this is our experience of living in Canada our whole lives. We've invited a range of expression to the table. Knowing that recentering historical narratives is not a singular event, but ongoing work. And so we send people home, singing our thanksgiving as a lullaby, or maybe an awakening. Wow.